And here we are from the capital city of Iowa, Des Moines, neutral site today for Big Ten Network basketball. It is Creighton and Iowa, and the sharp shooting freshman Josh Oglesby. He's off to a great start this year. He'll match up against one of the best talents in the country in the mid majors. That is Doug McDermott, Nelson Basabi, a super soft down in the paint as well. Iowa, Creighton, Big Ten Network basketball coming up. downtown Des Moines welcome to Big Ten college basketball presented by GMC we're at the Wells Fargo Arena part of the Iowa Event Center for the Great and Blue Jays and the Iowa Hawkeyes a neutral site about halfway in between for these two franchises and hi everybody we welcome you from the Wells Fargo Arena Brian Anderson along with Kenyon Murray great to have you with us we feel like we got a nice November matchup here because two teams that are on the rise two programs moving forward at three and oh and they match up very well against each other you would think yeah they do and we're going to find out a lot about both these teams today Iowa Hawkeyes running on all cylinders Fran McCaffrey year two his system really showing itself this year and the Creighton Blue Jays one of the best mid majors in the country and they're led by one of the best players in the country in Doug McDermott. Well, for each, it'll be a big test. Now, Doug McDermott has to be considered one of the top mid-major players because of his skills and because of his production in his first two seasons. Definitely. The newcomer of the year, freshman of the year, first team All-Missouri Valley Conference. Doug McDermott has everything that they need to be successful this year. He can score inside, outside. He's going to be a handful for the Hawkeyes today. It'll be interesting to see who matches up with McDermott. Now, Creighton is young. The Hawkeyes have some veteran leadership, and Matt Gaten's right at the top. And Matt, injury-free coming into this season. That was one of the things he stressed today in shoot-around as he feels good. Shooting at a high clip from three-point range, and one of the best free-throw shooters in the conference, Matt Gaten's ready to lead him. A great test for the Big Ten against the Missouri Valley Conference. Iowa and Creighton get ready for some up-tempo, entertaining basketball coming up next. BTN Men's Basketball is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. Peak antifreeze. When you peak, you win. Rotel and Velveeta. Together, their queso dip is sure to make any get-together better. Sunday afternoon hoops on the Big Ten Network in the middle game of our triple header. And a good crowd, an energetic crowd to see this one. It's a neutral site, but it feels like more of a pro-Iowa crowd here in Des Moines. Let's give you the starting lineups. Both of these teams off to 3-0 starts. Their starting lineups have not changed. Grant Gibbs, Jahins Monaga with Antoine Young, Doug McDermott, the player to watch, and Gregory Echenique. Starting five for Creighton. And they are led by Greg McDermott. He has roots that run very deep in the state of Iowa. And, of course, his son, Doug, is now a star for the Creighton. Blue Jays, the starting five for Fran McCaffrey's Iowa Hawkeyes. Same starting five all season. Matt Gaydens is their leading scorer in that terrific, talented veteran backcourt in Cartwright and Gaydens. And there is Fran McCaffrey in his second season. He has taken his teams to the NCAA tournament at every stop, most recently Siena. And now the rebuilding continues here at Iowa. He likes his team and... He likes it up-tempo, wants him to play fast. Mike Stewart, Mike Whitehead, and Steve Olson, our officials. And we're ready to tip it off here at the Dale Howard Classic in Des Moines. Two talented point guards, veteran senior point guards matching up in this one. Eshenike, strong inside but knocked away. And here come the Hawkeyes. And Kenyon, right away, you start to get the sense of the pace of this game. Both of these teams want to do a lot of running today. Each team is going to take their chances running the floor, but you saw there with Creighton. They're going to go inside. They have a starting center for the Villains Way, the national team playing for them, and so they're going to try and get inside and expose Iowa, where they may be a little weak at as inside where they lost Andrew Brommer. Here's Cadence off the front iron. 
Creighton not afraid to push the basketball either. They're they're bigger than Iowa, which is unusual. They're out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Iowa in the Big Ten. That's a little bit of a change, but Iowa is playing to their style. And you'll see a lot of presses and a lot of running as a foul is on May. There's Doug McDermott. Or rather, Greg McDermott, father of Doug McDermott. Second year in Iowa. He was the head coach at Iowa State. A lot of ties to the state of Iowa here on this floor today. One thing about Creighton is they're actually playing with two point guards. Grant Gibbs starts at the three, but he gives him another ball handler. And that's huge for the Creighton Blue Jays. Offensive board and a putback that will count. Ball is tipped in the air as Doug McDermott puts the Blue Jays on the board. And there we said Doug McDermott is going to be able to attack the Hawkeyes inside out there. Johnny on the spot there, offensive rebound, able to put it back. That's the easy point for Doug McDermott. He's six seven. Doug McDermott is a threat not only inside as we saw there, but away from the basket as well. He presents a major challenge to the Hawkeyes today. Stripped away, Gibbs, and he finds McDermott inside. McDermott has the first two buckets. And it is the Blue Jays that are the aggressor here early. And there you see the value of Grant Gibbs, able to get the ball off the rim, push it down, and then under control, able to feed the big fella inside for the easy layup. Grant Gibbs showing his value here early in this game. Grant Gibbs, an Iowa native. From Marion, transfer from Gonzaga. Bryce Cartwright. And it's stripped away, in trouble. Finds May, shot clock to five. Here's May. And here come the Blue Jays. Learn again, the Blue Jays got numbers if they take advantage. The lefty, Antoine Young. And now Cartwright. Basabi, a whistle. What do we have? Other way, a charge. Basabi with a foul, creating basketball. And here Cartwright pushing, didn't have great spacing there. Basabi coming in as a trailer. Great play there by the Creighton Blue Jays to stop in Iowa's transition game. And those are one of the things that Iowa's going to do, try and get out and run. Creighton's got to be able to stop it. Well, Fran McCaffrey knows uh, the mid-major style very well and was high in his praise of the Creighton Blue Jays prior to today's game. He knows this is a team that could be a major factor in the Missouri Valley Conference this year and potentially in the NCAA tournament this year. Gibbs finding a little space. And Basabi pulls it down. Well, anytime you got a great player like McDermott and a solid team around him of guards and inside players, you're going to have a chance to win a lot of games, and Creighton's in that position this year. Archie wild underneath, knocked away by Echenique. There's Young, there's McDermott. May with a rebound. And this is the pace we thought we'd have. Up and down, guys looking to take advantage in transition. Iowa looking to run here on their opportunity. And Gaydens hits a three-pointer for Matt Gaydens. A furious pace, back up Creighton. And that'll be an offensive foul on Gibbs. Once again. Both these teams want to run the floor, but Iowa and Creighton doing a great job of getting back, stopping the transition. Gaten's great job there, taking the charge on Gibbs. Creighton's wins have come against in North Carolina A&T, NCA&T, Chicago State, and a big road win against UAB their last time out, a 70-60 win, scoring a ton of points is Creighton, as is Iowa. Iowa's averaging 93 points per game in their first three victories. And that's a big change. We said now they look like they're really settling into the system that Fran McCaffrey wants to run. And then it helps when you've got two of your top guards shooting 60% from three-point range. Iowa can score a lot of points that way. Gibbs takes another one away. Sends it up to McDermott. And he can't find the handle. Good defense. Good recovery by the Hawkeyes. Believe it or not, Fran McCaffrey said he'd like to see the Iowa Hawkeyes actually play a little faster than they played last season in his first season as Eric May connects. 
And that's the game that Coach McCaffrey said Eric May has worked tirelessly on this offseason, that in-between game, being able to take the ball to the rack and shoot it at 10 to 15 feet. Foul on the play will take our first time out. Fran McCaffrey, year number two, and when we come back, we'll go back in time with Coach Fran. Well, a lot of trips up and down the floor. Not much scoring. 5-4, Iowa has the early lead at our first time out. Fran McCaffrey, year number two in Iowa and playing a brand of basketball. That takes us back to the Kenyon Murray days as an Iowa Hawkeye. Well, yeah, Fran wants to run up and down the floor with these guys, and he's got the team to do it. He's built on speed and shooting on the perimeter, but you're starting to see what he wanted to instill here. Now he has his players in. He's starting to recruit the guys that he wants in the program that can run his offense, and he's got a lot to smile about this year because he's happy with the team that he's got. Started at Lehigh, the youngest Division I head coach at the age of 26. He's now 50 years of age. And Coach Siena, a lot of success there over six seasons. Three trips to the NCAA tournament consecutively. And he was a pretty good player, too. His uh, nickname in college was White Magic. So. <laughs> At Penn. Great answers right out of the timeout. As Grant Gibbs, a transfer from Gonzaga, sat out a year last year. He's one of the many that know this floor very well, know this arena very well. State championship games here for the state of Iowa at the Wells Fargo Arena. And there's a lot of connections with both of these teams. Muscling inside. That's a tough move by Melside. Playing better with his back to the basket this year. Tough inside move against Inchimike. Wasabi came with McCaffrey. He had signed with Sienna, but decided to Follow McCaffrey to Iowa. And only a sophomore. He's already made a big impact for the Hawkeyes. Had a big year last year as a freshman. Great box out there by the Iowa Hawkeyes on that shot. May looks inside. Basavi. And a whistle. He will head to the line. Foul goes on Echenique. Oh, we said last year, Melson Basabi was great facing up to the basket, but he's really worked on his post-up game to be able to give him that extra dimension to be able to score in the post. And that was a great pass by Eric May. Coach McCaffrey making a point today to say that his assist to turnover ratio has been fantastic this year as he was a turn he's very turnover prone last year. In comes Devin Marble. Cartwright is out. And how about our peak keys to victory today, Kenyon? Well, for the Iowa Hawkeyes, they've got to continue their balance scoring, and then they've got to contain McDermott. They've got five players averaging double figures, so that's a key to keep that balance in their lineup, and then they've got to stop McDermott, the All-American candidate. And for Creighton, they've got to contest Iowa shooters who shoot almost 50% from three-point range and then limit the transitions. They've done a great job here in early going. Hawkeyes have Aaron White also in the game. Hawkeyes go 10 or 11 deep. A lot of flexibility with this upstyle. Up paced offense as McDermott connects for his third field goal. He has six of Creighton's eight. And great patience there by the Blue Jays to allow Iowa to press up and try to deny the wing. And McDermott very astutely backdoor cuts for the easy layup. McDermott well on his way. He's been a guy that's racked up at least 20 points in his last nine games going back to last season. Went for 27 in his last start against UAB. Creighton controls the board. Gibbs is everywhere right now. Back to McDermott, a foul. And McDermott will head to the line. And that's another great thing by Grant Gibbs is, like I said, he's able to get the ball off the rebound and then bring it down and get him set in their offense. So play point guard all through high school and at Gonzaga. And here he's that other guy on the floor that can get the team settled. And there he finds his good buddy Doug McDermott in the post again. Zach McCabe with the foul. The coach's son. Doug McDermott. We were talking to Greg earlier today. He said, how is it coaching your son? He goes, you know, he's he's the best player on the team, so it makes it a lot easier for me because he's a dominant force. And like you said, as long as he can treat him just like everybody else, when he's in between the line, he's coached. 
Outside of that, he's dad. But he said it's been a great little mix between the two, and Doug just wants to be treated like all the other players, too, so it makes it a lot easier for Coach McDermott. Yeah, Greg told Doug, don't you dare roll your eyes at me like you would in the living room over dinner. Marble kicks it out to McCabe, wide open, and cannot connect. Will Artino pulls the rebound down. And McDermott battling inside. You know, he put on about 15 pounds from his freshman year to a sophomore year. And plays like that show the strength of McDermott. Show the strength and it shows the hand. Everybody looks at the finish, but he was able to collect that ball with three Iowa defenders around him and then get it up on the glass. Great play by Doug McDermott. Ten points already as Gaten's answers. Much needed basket for Iowa. And Gaten's using his size there over the smaller defender, able to rise up and when he gets it that close, he's a master of using the backboard to knock down shots. Austin Chapman running the point for Speedster and has it knocked away. Vasabi got a hand on it. And a steal for Iowa. White takes it to the hole and a blocking foul. White is headed to the free throw line. And Aaron White has been very good here, but we see Creighton. Getting the ball down to McDermott. Three defenders around and he's still able to collect it. Great hands. And then Gatons using the glass, using his size, able to rise up. And you can see he's got more explosion this year. Like you said, he's feeling great physically. And that's something that Matt hasn't had the last couple years. So great start to the season, great start to the game for Matt Gatons. Gatons had a career high 27 on Monday against North Carolina AT. And he will head to the bench for a quick breather. Figure Iowa's a lot deeper than Creighton. They can, as we mentioned, go 10 or 11 deep right now. That's one of the aspects of Fran McCaffrey's style of play, maybe even more so than at any other point in his career. He said, I'm pressing more now than at, at any spot I've coached in the past because he has the athletes to do it and the depth to do it. And I think he's looking at the conference, too, where the Big Ten Conference is typically a very physical league. He's able to bring another dimension. I think he's going to be able to keep his team in games when they may be smaller than other teams. So it's just a great position for Iowa to be in to be able to switch things up. Devin Marble with a foul. Josh Jones got the contact on him. And we've got some changes. Avery Dingman. We'll check in for Gibbs. A very impressive first run for Grant Gibbs in this game. Well, McDermott has picked up most of the score, and Gibbs has been the playmaker in the early going. Iowa aggressive trap outside, getting the ball swung. And that's going the other way. Offensive foul on Josh Jones. Now, when it starts to get cold outside, it's always nice to look back. At great summer trips. Blue Jays had one. Continue that thought when we come back. We thought it would be an entertaining ball game today. We have one. Creighton and Iowa off to a terrific start. 12 10 Creighton. And how about a summer trip to bring a young team together, Kenya? They go to the Bahamas this summer, do the Blue Jays? Well, I'd like to take that trip too, but. One, you get extra practices, and I think whenever you're able to take a trip, I remember our overseas trip, it gave us a chance to really mesh together and get some of our new guys involved. And so for a young team like this, a great opportunity for them to create some more chemistry and really play against some good competition during the summer. See how it breaks down for the Blue Jays of Creighton. Greg McDermott has just three seniors, and his best player, his son, the sophomore, Doug McDermott, and he talked about the practice time in the Bahamas. That's really the key. They did play some games there. They're important games, but really the, the 10 practices putting this group together. And I think that's when they started to realize they've got something special here. It was brewing last year for Creighton and certainly has spilled over a lot of high expectations in Omaha this year with the Creighton Blue Jays in the Missouri Valley Conference. Shot clock down to five. Got to get a shot up. There is Oglesby. Oglesby had a 16 point game in his last game. And he brings another dimension to shooting in that six foot five. He can play the point guard position as well as the shooting guard and small forward position. So once again, we talk about that diversity among Fran McCaffrey's lineups. Oglesby does that as a freshman for him this year. Oglesby matching up with Austin Chapman. Chapman very fast, but you can see some of the height differential 
at the guard position. And Jones cranks one up. And Shadike pulls it down, and it's stripped away by McCabe. Yeah, Iowa right now, they've got everybody on the floor is 6'5 or taller right now. So even their point guard. So they're going to give Creighton a lot of problems being able to see over the double teams when Iowa goes to trap. A rocket inside to Archie. Couldn't handle it, but Marble is there. Cannot connect, and it's at Shadike with a rebound. I was not known as a big team. They'll be small by Big Ten standards, but their guards have some size. Uh, Creighton is a big club in the Missouri Valley Conference, which is a rough and tumble conference to say the least. They play the physical game in that league as well. Dingman sizes it up. Avery Dingman. And that's one of the things coach talked about when you're switching defenses and you're trapping all over the floor that leaves you exposed and Creighton able to find them on the wing there wide open three point shot you give these guys a chance to spot to set their feet and shoot the basketball like that it's going to be bottoms for them. Five point lead for Creighton with McDermott on the bench Oglesby who has the green light has missed his first two and the possession arrow belongs to Iowa. Now, just a reminder this week on BTN.com, don't miss any exciting hoops action. You can go to video.btn.com. Just go there this week, check out your upcoming basketball schedule. Go to video.btn.com for more information. Iowa has made one of its last seven shots. Greg McDermott getting some defensive pressure, getting a ton of offense from his son who is back in the game. And Craig with a basketball and a five point lead. Well, I think what we've seen is even though both these teams can score baskets, they're pretty good defensively as well. And so they're forcing each other into some tough shots. Iowa showing that on being one for their last eight. And I got missed, but McDermott is there. And he wants it back. Almost knocked away. An effort by White. Now numbers for Creighton. And there he is again. He is so tough to guard when you've got to guard him in the post. He posts up, he kicks it out, and then he steps out for the three-point basket, shooting 56% from the three-point line. Doug McDermott displaying everything here earlier in this game. From Ames, Iowa, the Missouri Valley Conference freshman of the year last year. First team all Missouri Valley Conference as a freshman. As White is off the mark. And the Blue Jays are back at it. McDermott running the floor again. <laughs> Throws one off the backboard. And a good look as Shadike, and it's in! And a chance at a three-point play. Everything going right for Creighton right now. And Doug McDermott, ball goes off the backboard, and he's still able to get the ball inside. Great hands, great pass over to Echenike. And he gets the luck of the bounce there. Straight in, Doug McDermott doing everything right now for his Creighton Blue Jays. All of that while the backboard and the gold standard is still shaking from the Gibbs pass. Would have dropped the clown at the carnival with that pass. Des Moines native Brandon Stubbs will check in. Creighton on an 8-0 run right now. And Gregory Echenique can add to it. 6'9 junior out of Venezuela. Transfer from Rutgers. And Creighton's going to get another possession out of this. And who tapped that one out? Doug McDermott. He's everywhere right now on the floor. An interesting lineup. Coach McCaffrey going to Grant Stubbs. That's an EK. Takes one to the jaw or the eye right after the shot. Unintentional elbow there. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Good luck inside. Yeah, very, the inadvertent elbow there as Nelson Basadi was going up to grab the ball to take it from out of bounds. But right now, everything going to Creighton Blue Jays' way. Creighton has traveled well here to Wells Fargo Arena. It's about a two hour drive from Omaha, almost in the middle. It's about a little over an hour and a half to Iowa City from here in a neutral side game. Let's take another look. Once again, Doug McDermott, great inside pass, great seal. And then able to go inside and Nelson Basabi just had his hands up. 
Now the referees, they're looking at this replay with us. Anytime there's an elbow, inadvertent or not, they're going to take a look just to make sure. And they've changed those rules this year with the flagrant one and flagrant two. Steve Olson, Mike Stewart, Mark Whitehead converging to take a look at the replay and deciding there was nothing to that. Over and done there pretty quick. But once again, looking at the lineup that Coach McCaffrey has on the floor, you got Basabi, Brandon Stubbs, McCabe, Matt Gatons, and Eric May. And we didn't think we'd see Stubbs in the game today, but obviously Coach McCaffrey not happy with some of his guard play to this point. Very intense defense by Creighton so far. Fran McCaffrey knew this was going to be the biggest test of the year so far. And the active hands of Antoine Young. 17 on the shot clock, 7.50 remaining in the first half. And Creighton with a shot to the jaw of the Iowa Hawkeyes early. A 12-point Creighton lead over the Iowa Hawkeyes. Middle game of our triple header on the Big Ten Network, Brian Anderson, Kenyon Murray, and wow, Creighton is a factor. They are as advertised, especially their star player, Doug McDermott. Well, Doug's done a great job of doing everything that we said he could do inside, outside, but the one thing that Creighton's doing a great job of is forcing the ball inside where they have an advantage right now. They've done a great job of contesting the shooters on the perimeter, and Iowa right now has got to find some answers on the offensive end. See if Iowa can find those answers out of the timeout, and there is a blocking call. And that foul will belong to Managa. And what do you want to do is come out of a timeout with a set play, and there they're going to Matt Gatons, their star, able to draw the foul on Managa. Looks like they're trying to feed the beast here. Gaydens fires a three, and the Hawkeyes needed that one in a big way. Matt Gaydens. Gaydens has been a scoring machine this year. He leads their club in scoring, coming off a 15-point game against Northern Illinois. I mentioned he had 27, a career high, on Monday against NCA and T. And Matt's always been a very physical player, but this year he looks in great shape. He's moving really well without the ball. The first couple of years he seemed to maybe a little bit overweight, but now he's able to play extended minutes. And with a shooter like him, you're going to have to be able to do that. Doug McDermott. How impressive is this? McDermott has 16 of Creighton's 25 points. Well, he is fast becoming this year's Jimmer Fredette. And how do you guard that? I mean, he's coming off a baseline down screen, fading out to the three-pointer, then knocking it down with someone in his face. You can't guard that. I mean, Doug McDermott has done everything that we knew he could do and more here early in this game. Gaines again. That's going to go. Gaines will go to the line. A chance for three. And the senior stepping up. Some big baskets here for him. Here you go, Matt Gaines there. One, we said he's a very physical player, able to take the contact. Couple dribbles there. Clears himself. And I said, he's a great with using the glass, kind of Tim Duncan-ish in the way that Matt can use a glass to score baskets. And one of the all-time great free throw shooters in a Big Ten conference stepping to the free throw line. Well, Iowa, their last two possessions, they've been able to put three on the board and six total points in the last two possessions. It's back to a nine-point game. Well, hard to keep your eyes off number three in blue. But this is where they got to do it. They've got to get some stops right now. Creighton been able to do anything they wanted to on the offensive end the last five, six, seven possessions. That's a three-pointer off the front iron. And a stop for Iowa. Eric May looking for help. Take it away. Creighton is 10 for 20. Shooting so far today. With McDermott doing most of the damage. Oh, a nice, nice take to the basket. Antoine Young, he's a left hander. That's his strong side and a good finish by the senior point guard. That was a great finish, but the one thing is when Doug McDermott set the screen in a roll, he drew Eric May over. So when the help had to come, it came late because May had to account for McDermott in the paint. So 
Great identification there by Young, taking it to the basket and then having the strength to finish inside. And Young converts the three-point play, the senior guard. Back is White. As Fran McCaffrey is searching for the right combination here. Well, Just think, under six to go in the first half. Well, I was going to say, I think Iowa... They've been able to do with the, some things on offensive end, but defensively, they just can't account for anybody. All the trapping defense, I think Coach McCaffrey may have to settle into one and see how he does with that as far as trying to stop this onslaught by the Blue Jays. White to the basket. Hey, White, beautiful take. So he answers as the freshman from Strongsville, Ohio, Aaron White, delivers a big basket. Gibbs, an answer right away. Locked and loaded greatness right now. Great dribble penetration there by Young and Gibbs. They were talking about him today. Very solid. Hit some huge points, baskets down the stretch at UAB and doing the same thing here early. One and done for Iowa. Creighton trying to keep the hammer down. And it's taken away. Gatons comes up with the loose ball. Here's White. And a scoop and a whistle. And White will go to the line. Not sure if Gibbs was in the restricted area or not. It didn't appear that his feet were set. Let's take another look. Well outside the restricted area, but you saw him lean in with his right shoulder and right elbow into Aaron White. And that's the one thing that the coaches have said something about Aaron White is he's able to put the ball on the floor and be able to see that here early in this game, get into the basket. A much better shooter, only one for three from the free throw line right now, but we're trying to get some something out of it. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, we'll catch you up on these stories. A recap from Rhode Island and Nebraska and Lincoln. Check out the stars of the Big Ten. And first half highlight stats and Kenyon Murray's analysis. Fran McCaffrey's first road game of the season. But it is a pro Iowa crowd here, although the Blue Jay fans have traveled well. They're making a lot of noise. Iowa missing an opportunity there to get two points back. Hawkeyes have struggled shooting other than Matt Gates here in this first half. Austin Chadman gives it up to Dingman. Both teams starting to shoot it well recently. Creighton has made six of their last eight shots. And there's a takeaway and a whistle. That is Iowa basketball. The foul is on Ethan Rogge. And Iowa doing a great job of trapping the basketball there. And Aaron White off the Matt Gaten's tip, able to jump inside and get a steal there. Step into the free throw line where he's one for four right now. Aaron White's got to get a couple back here for the Hawkeyes. Right back to the line he goes. White had a double-double in his first game as a Hawkeye. 19 points, 10 rebounds in his first game in Iowa City. And Fran McCaffrey knows he's got some young players that he's going to rely on heavily as part of that rotation, part of being deep, 10 deep. He's going to have to use some of these talented young freshmen and sophomores, which means you're going to have to deal with the ups and downs throughout the course of the season. And that's a great thing about freshmen, though, they bounce back really quick. So I think with the leadership he has in the backcourt and with some of his frontcourt players, I will be okay. They'll be able to get a lot out of these guys this year. Avery Dingman again connects. Unexpected offense for the Blue Jays from the 6'6 freshman from Branson, Missouri. Dingman. Gaines finds Archie, and that one is going to be a block. Archie is headed to the line. Great continues to shoot the basketball. They're playing hard. They're playing active. Stripping the ball. White, however, a good answer on the other side. 34-20, Creighton. It has been an impressive start for the Creighton Blue Jays out of the Missouri Valley Conference out of Omaha, Nebraska, but 
a lot of Iowa ties of course and Doug McDermott uh, two state championships here in Iowa and uh, on this floor as a matter of fact his dad Greg's from Cascade and uh, there are a number of connections not just with Creighton but also the Iowa Hawkeyes but some some players that are very familiar with this court. Yeah definitely and Wells Fargo Arena hosts the boys and girls state championship and in this game there's eight players that have played high school basketball here at Wells Fargo Arena for a combined eight state championships. Grant Gibbs from a very story program in Cedar Rapids Marion Iowa Lindmar actually has the number one point guard in the country on their roster this year but he's not going to Iowa he's going to North Carolina. Speaking of North Carolina Harrison Barnes from Iowa he and Doug McDermott teammates maybe one of the greatest prep teams in the history of Iowa high school basketball. Echenique finishes inside. Great continues to pound it inside against the Hawkeyes right now. Well, that's where they have the advantage right now. And then because they've established themselves inside as Cartwright hits a pull-up jump shot, as they've established themselves inside, that has opened up their perimeter game where they've been able to knock down the open threes. McDermott misses. I haven't seen much of that. He has 16 points already. 16 of Creighton's 36. And a whistle and a block. And there Cartwright back in the game very assertive on the offensive end. He's been struggling with his shot so trying to get something going to the basket. Cartwright is their guy. He's got to get going. He's got to run the offense and came on strong at the end of the season last year looking to continue that here in his senior year. Austin Chapman hit with a foul Cartwright to the line after scoring in the last possession. Cartwright led the Big Ten in assists last year, also led in turnovers. Something he's tried to clean up. Say BTN goes where you want, when you want it, with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live games and BTN original programming like The Journey, Big Ten Basketball 2012 on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. BTN to go is available, no extra charge to subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or participating video providers. Let's go to btntogo.com to find out more. And we'll go from one foul line to the other as Basabi picks up the foul. And McDermott is headed to the free throw line. I don't think there's one part of this game that Doug McDermott hasn't been a part of. And interesting there, those two went at each other last year for the USA 19 and under team where Doug McDermott made the team was the third leading scorer for the USA team. McKay back in for Iowa. McDermott with 16. And this is a couple there. 12 point lead Creighton. 240 remaining in the first half. And Iowa looking for a fast finish to this first half to shoot their way back into this game going into the break. Oglesby being hounded by Dingman and Dingman's going to get a foul and now the foul starting to rack up for the Creighton Blue Jays here. Yeah, it was a little more physical in the beginning of this game and they let a lot of things go but they really tightened it up here. Both teams have been aggressive going to the basket but Iowa truly being the benefactor here in the late stages of the first half. Josh Oglesby at the line, 6'5 freshman from Cedar Rapids. And the free throw woes continue for the Hawkeyes. Oglesby started his year one for nine from the field, but then answered with 16 points on Thursday against Northern Illinois. That was a, a good get for Fran McCaffrey. As it looks like McDermott has a scratch and new rule that uh, you get 20 seconds now to try to get the uh, the blood stopped and get it patched up. This way, a player doesn't have to automatically leave the floor. One out of two. Don't forget, coming up on the State Farm halftime report. We'll get you all caught up. 220 away. 
You talk about Ogilvy being a good get. He was one of those kids, very influential in the state as far as his commitment to Iowa. Really led to them securing some top players here in the state of Iowa for next year as well. Josh Jones. Hometown kid from Omaha. He's had an impact in this game. He's gotten a lot of minutes in this game. And he connects once again. Jones, his first field goal. Well, Managa has been in foul trouble, and so Jones has had to come in and, and spell those minutes there. And he's done a really good job on both ends of the floor. McCabe cannot finish, and it's Echenique with a rebound. Even when Iowa gets a good look, unable to put it down. Well, now Creighton, chance to step on the gas here as we wrap up this first half. Antoine Young to the basket and misses with a right hand. Comes up with the rebound. Blue Jays moving the ball. Got it. Avery Dingman. Another three-pointer for Avery Dingman, his third. And when you've got guys on your floor that are playing with confidence, players like Demon can come off the bench, feel confident in their shot, and he's been able to knock down a couple. Here's Gaines. Dingman with a rebound. Creighton on a 10 0 run and second chance points, making the most of their possessions. Good luck, Jones, the lefty. Fires Jones again. Once again, that inside out play. It's Nike catching the ball inside. Didn't even look to the basket, but kicked it right out to Jones on the perimeter. And Jones able to knock down the three. Creighton running on all cylinders. Fran McCaffrey said this would be Iowa's biggest test of the year to this point. I don't think even Fran McCaffrey expected this. Lights out the Creighton Blue Jays in the first half. Well, we knew that they were one of the best mid-major teams in the conference or in the country. And there the Blue Jays, great ball movement. Iowa not able to close out on the shooters. Dingman knocking it down, and then Jones on the kick out from Mitchell EK. The Blue Jays shooting lights out, and the target is the Hawkeyes right now. Well, if you're Iowa, just trying to survive this first half and figure out some kind of answer. You figure the way back for the Hawkeyes is going to be behind the arc. They're going to have to start making their three-point shots. They're certainly going to have to tighten up defensively a little bit in the paint. But right now, that's what Coach has got to figure out. He's got to figure out what defense is going to give him the best chance to not only guard the inside game of the Blue Jays, but he's able to get out on the shooters. And right now, he's tried multiple defenses and hasn't been able to figure it out. So the Hawkeyes need to get through this last 22 seconds, regroup at halftime, and then come out with a better plan in the second half. McDermott with 17, Dingman has nine. Dingman averages just a little over five points per game this year, and already with three three-pointers. Valuable last possession, if for nothing else, for psychological reasons for the Hawkeyes going into the break. Now three seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. It's Cartwright, front iron, and McDermott pulls it down. And a whistle underneath. Actually, a timeout. I beg your pardon. Well, right now, the difference in this game is the stars have shown up. Doug McDermott showed up. He's shown up for, from the beginning of this game. He has been the catalyst and everything. Started inside, getting great looks inside. Backdoor cut. They look for him. And once your star gets going like he has, it gives everybody else confidence. And Doug McDermott has gotten so much confidence for the rest of this Blue Jay team. That you got guys coming off the bench like Jones and Dingman that are hitting huge three point baskets. And on the other side, Gatons, he's having a really good game, but he has no support right now. He hasn't gotten anything from Basabi. Cartwright has struggled with his shot. And then the guys, like you said, when they got to the basket, they're still not able to convert. So right now, McDermott has the upper hand because he's got guys that are helping him in this game. They know him well here in Des Moines. He and Harrison Barnes, a terrific team at Ames. They won 53 consecutive at the prep level. Doug McDermott had signed with Northern Illinois. He was, uh, or Northern Iowa, I beg your pardon. He was headed to Northern Iowa, but changed his mind and wanted to play for his dad at Creighton. Last chance, Cartwright at the buzzer. Yes! And that's a huge confidence builder, not only for the Hawkeyes, but for the Rice Cartwright. Great play by Zach McCabe on the steal and the pass up the floor. Finally.
Finally an answer for McDermott and the Blue Jays as Cartwright hits a big three on the steal from the out of bounds play. Just great steal there by McCabe and presence of mind to get the Cartwright. And the one thing you see in these instances is shooters rush it. Cartwright took his time, set his feet, and was able to knock down a shot. Another look here, Zach McCabe, head up, Cartwright taking his time. Bottoms. Hopefully that gives the Hawkeyes will give some more confidence coming out of the break right now. A 16 point lead at the break for Creighton. Back with more from Des Moines when we continue on BTN. Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. We welcome you back. The State Farm Halftime Report. A neutral site today, Creighton and Iowa. Creighton has opened up a 16-point halftime lead. Brian Anderson, Kenyon Murray back with you. And we're starting to look around the Big Ten a little bit. And uh, it's been an exciting start to the college hoop season right now. But I think the theme in the Big Ten, Kenyon, a lot of stars lost. Now the next wave coming up, who's got your eye at this point? Well, right now you have to look at some of the teams that have always been at the top of the conference, and that starts with Michigan State, Wisconsin. But Draymond Green has been fantastic for the Spartans. It seems like he's been there for eight years, but Draymond Green once again leading the Spartans here in the early season. He's been phenomenal, averaging 11 points and over 12 rebounds a game. But then you have to look at some of the other guys looking to step up this year. And we go up to Minnesota and Trevor Mbakwe. Huge force inside, averaging 18 points and 10 rebounds. He's the catalyst for what Minnesota wants to do this year. And he's proven that he's one of the best post players, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. And then we got to travel down to Ohio State and Jared Sullinger, freshman of the year, decided to come back for his sophomore season at Ohio State. A more slim down, more in shape, and even more determined Jared Sullinger looking to lead Ohio State not only to the Big Ten title, but to the national title. So where are all the guards? Kenyon Murray. I mean, it's all big men on your uh, spotlight here, but there are a number of players, obviously. You've got Matt Gaines in there as one of your sleepers. Yeah, I definitely think so. You know, if Matt continues to play the way he has, and Iowa has to play well as, as well, but then you got to look at Jordan Taylor. He's probably the best point guard coming back in the conference. And Robbie Hummel, what do you have to say about him? Coming off of two knee injuries, he's had some big games this year. I think he's going to be what Purdue needs and if they want to get over to Hummel because they lost a lot to the draft last year. Now Robbie Hummel with 24 points earlier this week. So it looks like a balanced conference. I think you, I think you have to put Ohio State at the top right now. They are certainly the favorites, but this is going to be a rough and tumble league once again. And for Iowa, they're running a very unusual style of offense for the Big Ten. They're up tempo. Now they're having a tough day against Creighton, but what's it going to take for Iowa to get themselves in the picture in the Big Ten this year? Well, we talked about the balance, and they have to have that. We haven't seen that here in the first half. They've got to have five, six guys that contribute game in and game out, and that's what's going to help them be successful here in the Big Ten. But I think Iowa, if they play well, they can finish in the middle of the pack. All right, well, Iowa made a big three at the end of the first half, see if they can claw their way back against the Creighton Blue Jays. We'll be back with more on the State Farm Halftime Report. 16-point Creighton lead. We'll look at the big first half of Doug McDermott when we continue. Just about ready for half number two, and welcome back to Des Moines, Iowa, and the State Farm Halftime Report. Brian Anderson with Kenyon Murray. Impressive first half from the Creighton Blue Jays, and we talked about this team in our open as being one of the premier teams among the mid-majors. This could be a factor team come NCAA tournament time, and boy, you got a couple of guys, Greg McDermott and his son Doug McDermott, that are quickly making a name for themselves on the college basketball landscape. Doug McDermott has 17 points right now. Creighton is shooting nearly 60% from the field, but let's Get into this game a little bit, Kenyon. Matt Gaydon's off to a fast start today. Well, the highlights were few and far between for the Hawkeyes, but Matt Gaydon showed us something here in the first half. Off to a hot start again, but it was Doug McDermott and the Creighton Blue Jays that took control of this game in the first half. Able to beat the Iowa pressure and knock down three-pointers. Creighton shooting a blistering 59% from the field in the first half. Iowa's got to do a better job here in the second half of controlling 
the Blue Jays on the offensive end. Yeah, Creighton 7 out of 12 from behind the arc. Matt Gaines leads the Hawkeyes with 11 points, while Doug McDermott has 17 for the Creighton Blue Jays. Does Iowa have an answer? State Farm Halftime Report continues. We're back for half number two from Des Moines. Well, Creighton, the preseason favorites to win the Missouri Valley Conference, and they are showing you why here this afternoon so far. 16-point lead for the Creighton Blue Jays. And Doug McDermott has been a force. It's time for today's Reese's Perfect Combination between McDermott and Dingman. 26 points for the Blue Jays of the 45 on the board. Eshenike wide open, and Gaydens with the foul, a smart foul to send Eshenike to the free throw line and right out of the gates Iowa break down defensively and that's what we said they had to come out and establish themselves that way but great play by the Blue Jays coming out running a nice set to get the ball inside once again 20 to 6 points in the paint Creighton over Iowa right now and they went right back to the well that's been so successful for them in this game. Gregory Eshenike. Transfer from Rutgers showed up at Creighton on the campus in the Dana Altman years. Dana Altman going to Oregon from Creighton. And now McDermott in his second season as Gaydens hits the back iron. Offensive rebound. Iowa was limited in their second chance points in the first half. Sabi on the double team. There's Cartwright. Kicks it over to May for three. Another miss. And here comes Creighton. And Iowa, those are the shots they got to knock down, and those are the shots that Creighton is knocking down. Eric May, only eight minutes there in the first half. McDermott misses with the right hand. Haven't seen much of the press from Iowa as Basabi can't connect. Cold shooting for Iowa coming out of the Halftime break. And there, Eric May on the break. Didn't look even look at the basket. When you're shooting that well from the perimeter, you've got to look for your shot. And there was a transition opportunity for May, but because he hasn't shot the ball well here early, didn't even look at the rim. They start to feel a little bit of the pressure mount up for Iowa. Now, this is a team that can score a lot of points quickly. But you figure the way back for them in this game is behind the arc. They're going to have to start hitting some shots and start hitting some threes as Gibbs is wide open. Shot clock winding down and another offensive rebound. So again, Iowa's size getting exposed on the inside as Basabi was matched up again. Echenique able to give Creighton a second chance. Echenique with six rebounds and he goes to the board and that is going to go. With the pink shoes and all, Gregory Echenique, a chance at a three point play. And that's just knowing where you need to go with the basketball and there the double team came from the top. Echenique able to feel it and spin on the baseline side and just strength. 270 pounds going to the basket, able to get the ball up. And remember, he's the starting center for the Venezuela national team, so he's got experience in these instances. And there are those pink shoes. They wore them in a, a, a cancer awareness charity game last year. He said, hey, they fit so well, I'm sticking with them. And you know what? When you're 6'9", 270, wear whatever you want. There's May with an air ball. Wasabi is on the bench for Iowa with three fouls. And there's a big basket. Bryce Cartwright connects for a three-pointer. He's been quiet so far today, and Iowa would like to see him get going a little bit. Well, right now, it's not the offense that's hurting Iowa. It's their defense. I mean... Creighton's able to do anything on the offensive end right now. That's where they've got to get tougher and they've got to get stops. Oh. Antoine Young was tripped, wanted a call. No whistle, and this will belong to Iowa. And Creighton fans wanting a foul. Cartwright pushing it. Got a mismatch underneath with Gaydens. Gaines, good pass to Archie. 
And Iowa needs a little bit more of that. Dayton's drawn so much attention, they're able to get the ball over to Archie. Now they got to get another one here on the defensive side. Devin Archie gets the Hawkeye faithful up from their seats. Gibbs dribbles himself open but misses from short range. Echenique, another offensive rebound. He's third of the second half. He has seven boards and puts Creighton back up 16. It's those second chance opportunities. Iowa is a line Creighton to get that's putting them in a position that they are right now. And McCabe will go to the line for two. Gibbs with a foul. And McCabe's got to finish that, but Creighton, short shot there, but able to get a second chance opportunity. There's Nikkei, Johnny on the spot, able to finish. And then Matt Gatons, dribble drive, drawing three defenders, able to drop it down to Archie. Iowa has to do a better job on the defensive end. And McCabe, you've seen him twice go inside with easy point blank layup looks and not be able to finish. It's almost looking like Iowa's legs are being taken out from under him as he's short on his first free throw. And Iowa, that's part of their game. Iowa now 8 for 16 in free throw opportunities. Let me make a correction. That last foul was on McDermott. A scrum underneath. The ball pops free, and that will be Creighton basketball. Archie touched it last. Another miss at the free throw line for Iowa. They come into this game shooting almost 78% from the free throw line as a team. Free throws really killing them right now. Just 8 for 17 from the free throw line. Ten on the shot clock, and there's McDermott cutting to the lane. Wide out of position, and Young able to dribble, penetrate, and get the ball to him. Eric May with an answer. Like you said, there's no there's no problem for Iowa on the offensive end. They, they just got to get stops, and right now Creighton has the answer for everything that I was throwing at him. Creighton into a lot of sets here. Like Iowa, they are good in transition. As Young, the lefty, misses the three. Now Gaydens will push it. Iowa really hasn't had a chance to push it much, nor have they had a chance to press much. McCabe, but Chinike got a hand on that ball, deflected it just enough. That's tough. beautiful. That's tough. That's tough move by Young inside. Double teams spinning back and forth. He and Bryce Cartwright are almost mirror image of, his, of each other and how they play, and Young taking it to Cartwright. Cartwright right-handed. Young is a lefty. Senior guards. May. In and out. One and done. Here comes Creighton. Boy, this could get messy quickly for the Hawks. If they don't get some stops defensively, McDermott follows his own. Another offensive board. McDermott continues to impress. And a blocking call underneath on Creighton. And McDermott doing everything here in the second half. There he is able to catch it inside, finish. Second effort, Creighton just outworking him. Well, you want to know what these two college greats have in common with Doug McDermott? We'll tell you when we come back. Well, you want to know how good Doug McDermott has been as Creighton is out to a 20-point lead. Mid-majors are starting to blossom with celebrities all over the place. We saw it last year with Jimmer Fredette. Look at this company, Carmelo Anthony with Syracuse, across the board numbers, then compare that to Kevin Durant, 903 points. It's just crazy to even think about, but there is Doug McDermott. Now, these are freshman seasons. The kind of numbers that McDermott put up last year to earn him these kind of accolades. Well, we talked about how good this kid is and where he can do it anywhere on the floor, and that really puts him in a very select company of players and really shows you how good he really is and the potential for Doug McDermott is who knows the sky's the limit understand it's a different kind of player different kind of league but doug mcdermott first team all missouri valley conference as a freshman that hasn't happened since 1952. 
The battle for that one. White wrestles it away from Will Artino. That ball is out on Artino, and the Hawkeyes have the basketball. Nice little scrum there, though, but the referees have allowed a little bit of physicality to go in this game, and both players going hard. Devin Marble will run the point. There's White, another freshman. And that one is in and out. That's been the story of the day for the Hawkeyes. Another one missed. Creating a chance to add to their 20-point lead. And very smart there by Young to had an opportunity to run, but wanted to come back out and run a set play. Be effective where they have been all day long. Gibbs. And look out below as Young goes head over heel into the stands. Well, let's hope he's all right. He took a major spill. Man, great hustle. Up 20 points going over the front row. Some kind of athleticism just to come down on his hands like a cat. Yeah, he caught his hip there a little bit on the, on the metal stair there. But that's the effort that you love to see out of players. Like you said, even though up 20 points, still hustling like they were down 20. Great play there by Young. They Creighton, they certainly know they have something special brewing this year. They're reminding their fans of the Kyle Korver days back in the early 2000s at Creighton. And this team might have a chance to make some noise, not just in the conference, but in the NCAA tournament as well. As White sizes up a three, that one is halfway down and out. Shooting is failing the Hawkeyes today. Jones got another one. That's a tough shot, but you know what's great about that is great pass off the penetration, one dribble right into his shot, elevation, technique, great on that pull-up shot by Jones. McDermott started, he scored the first 10 of the first 12, and Creighton has been able to spread it around. Jones, now it's seven. We got Avery Dingman who had three three-pointers in the first half. Now you can always hear from BTN personalities, get programming information, and so much more. Follow the BTN on Twitter and on Facebook today. Are you part of the Twitter universe there, Kenyon? A little bit. More okay. Facebook now. <laughs> Jones steals it away. Iowa has missed its last seven shots and three of 14 shooting in the second half. Roggy, why not? Great putting on a clinic. And we, today in Des Moines. and we knew Roggy could shoot. That's the first opportunity he had tonight. But once again, dribble penetration, baseline, Grant Gibbs catch. Seeing the open man getting it to him. Great shot. Creighton is 8 for 16 from behind the arc. A great drive there by Chapman. Quick swing by Gibbs, not even taking a look at the basket. And Rocky stepping into a nice, easy three-point. Well, the extra pass, Creighton as unselfish as it gets. Fran McCaffrey pointed that out. The fact that they spread it around, and yes, Doug McDermott scores most of the points, but it's all the activity prior to McDermott's touches. Chapman falls down. And now a takeaway. White to the basket. That won't go. I was just not able to convert inside. How many easy layups have we seen them miss at the basket here tonight? Iowa came into this game averaging 93 points per game. Fran McCaffrey says we weren't even shooting the ball that well to average 93 a game in our first three games. Well, shooting has been exposed here today. I think it really shows that they've got to go back to their drawing board as far as how they defend, especially on the perimeter, because Creighton is lights out right now. And they've gotten comfortable, so I was really going to have to pick it up here in the last 11 minutes. That's a travel, and that's going the other way after Dingman's fourth three-pointer. All three here in Des Moines this afternoon.
All Creighton here in Des Moines, the capital city here in Iowa, and the pro Hawkeye crowd as far as numbers, but Creighton and uh, their group of fans that have made the trip from Omaha, about a two hour drive, they have made themselves quite comfortable here at the Wells Fargo Arena. Very impressive performance by the Clay uh, Creighton Blue Jays at this point. Creighton is on a 12 0 run. Iowa has not scored a basket in five minutes on the game clock. 16 0 8 was their last basket made. They've missed their last eight shots. What a takeaway here. Here comes Gaydens. And that's taken right back. Rocky on the other end. He's in trouble. And right through the hands of Jones. A little sloppy coming out of the timeout. And the poor shooting continues for the Hawkeyes. And Iowa right now is really struggling with their shot. But I think what Creighton's done to take away Iowa's legs is they've really pounded the ball inside. They've looked more like the Big Ten team because they've thrown the ball inside. There's a whistle and around and out it goes. Creighton will head to the line as Avery Dingman will shoot two. Dingman has hit four three pointers in this game. In three games prior to this one today, averaging a little over five points a game. That gives him 13. Don't forget tomorrow night, BTN has another slate of great college hoops action. First, the Hoosiers take on Gardner Webb. Then at 8 30, the third ranked Buckeyes host. North Florida coverage starts 630 Eastern tomorrow presented by GMC and what so Dingman a couple of free throws the Ohio State Buckeyes in our State Farm state of success 25 game home winning streak matching up against the Ospreys tomorrow night well, as Demon goes out, the one thing that's helped elevate his game today is knocking down those three pointers. And there on the last play, he's able to dribble drive and get a look inside. And so they've really set Iowa up to do whatever they want to do on the offensive end here. Great pass. Oglesby with a three, and now the Hawkeyes put the pressure on. All five starters for Creighton back in the game now, and a foul on May. Foul on May. Iowa will have Campbell coming up next and then they will host Clemson on the 29th of November Big Ten ACC challenge conference starts for Iowa against Purdue at home on the 28th of December so obviously a lot of work to get done between now and then for Fran McCaffrey's Hawkeyes. Well I think what this does is give Iowa a lot to go back to the drawing board on and see what they have to fix. I think they've gotten some good looks, but defensively they've been exposed, and that's the one thing I know Coach McCaffrey's going to want to focus on once they get back to practice. That is 23 points for Doug McDermott. What a star he is! Knocked away at Shanike. Braden running game. Knocked away by May. Recovers, or does he? Nope. Steps on the baseline. That'll be Creighton basketball. And there Gibbs trying to make a play on the. Fast break. We talked about the injuries that Gibbs has had and not able to elevate there. He's had issues with his knees, but great play way to push it. But in an even greater play by Eric May to get back and get a block shot. Well, prior to that make by Oglesby, Iowa ends up going nearly six minutes without a basket. Five minutes, 44 seconds to be exact. Not the kind of start to the second half, and that's why they find themselves down 29. In the meantime, Creighton went on a 14-0 run out of the halftime break. Eshenike with a left, he'll go to the line. Once again, going inside. It's like beating a nail on the head. They know exactly where they're going. And 26 to 8 points in the paint. Iowa been more perimeter oriented. They haven't got very good looks from their post players. And so you're seeing a discrepancy there, which has led to this big lead by the Creighton Blue Jays. Asabe has 
Been in foul trouble today, and again he'll head to the bench. Echenique has been a tough matchup for Masabi. His Gabe Oleseni comes in. Oleseni, the freshman from London. And he'll get some minutes the rest of the way here tonight, you'd figure. Oglesby again, what a sweet stroke he has. Oglesby coming off 16 points. He's hit the last two buckets for the Hawkeyes. And he's really looking for a shot here late in the game. So I think coming into the game, coach is probably told him, hey, we need somebody to look for their shot and knock down something. And Oglesby's done that. He's been solid on the defensive end as well. Fran McCaffrey's been in the coaching game 29 years, and he said he has rarely seen a shooter like Oglesby. And has encouraged him to continue to shoot. He has the green light at any time. Just a natural stroke. It's going to play a big part. If the Hawkeyes are going to have any success this year in the Big Ten Conference, they're going to have to shoot it well. And Oglesby figures to be in the middle of it. Yeah, and his size is a definite advantage too. At six foot five, able to extend over defenders. Eric May. Got himself trapped underneath. And they run into a roadblock in Echenique. Oglesby against the 6-7 McDermott. And a foul on McDermott. Timeout in Des Moines. Creighton rolling along here at the Wells Fargo Arena. BTN Men's Basketball is presented by GMC. We are professional grade. And by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. Back in Des Moines with producer Michael Rosenblum, director Todd Benjamin, Brian Anderson, and Kenyon Murray. Great to have you with us today. Did not expect this. We thought this was going to be a terrific matchup of two programs that are up and coming on the rise but Creighton from the jump have been the aggressors here today and they are proving why they are one of the top mid-major teams in the country right now and a number of polls rated second among the mid-majors behind Ole Gonzaga. Well they've really proven that and they've got some players that have helped that cause in Doug McDermott and Gregory Echenique they have been fabulous inside and have got some welcome help off the bench as well. Oglesby cannot connect. Oliseni having it knocked away. And now May for three. Boy. That bank is closed for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The poor shooting continues. Just five made shots out of 24 attempts in the second half. And Iowa seemed rushed. It's almost like as the lead grew bigger, their shot preparation got shorter. So they started rushing a lot of their shots coming up short. They just haven't had the balance on the offensive end today to stay in this game. Marble got a hand on it, but Young gets it back, calls a timeout. Six on the shot clock when we come back. Creighton 70, Iowa 41, Creighton basketball when we continue. Well, Creighton from the rough and tumble Missouri Valley Conference enjoying a 29 point lead over the Iowa Hawkeyes. There is a former Hawkeye MVP, Roy Marble Sr. His son Devin Marble is a point guard on this Iowa Hawkeyes club. He'll be able to catch his son playing a father and son team. There's Devin Marble. He'll get some minutes here at, at 6 5 running the point. Sophomore out of Michigan. And yeah. right out of the timeout, Green comes back with a basket and now a 31. And that's what Coach McDermott has done every time. Out of a timeout, he's run set plays that have gotten the ball inside. And whether it was Echenique or his son Doug, they all went inside and got good looks at the basket. And Iowa just getting hammered inside. I think the Missouri Valley is going to be a fantastic conference this year. And this is one of the top teams there. And Drake late earlier beat Iowa State. So they've got some pretty good teams that are going to give these 
bigger conferences some uh, a run for the money. Now Creighton has a great rivalry with Wichita State. Wichita State won the NIT last year. Well, uh, Creighton, as you see McDermott finish inside, so strong, so talented, inside, outside, this guy does it all. Largest lead of the game for the Creighton Blue Jays, 33. And that's that strength. There's that 15 pounds going to work right there that he's put on it since last season, able to finish through two defenders. And I don't know how you guard him. Oglesby for three finally hits. <laughs> now, last season, Creighton ended up in the college basketball invitation, and they ended up in the championship series against Oregon. Interesting matchup there with Creighton's former coach, Dana Altman, and the Oregon Ducks. Oregon won that. Championship, but it created some extra games for Creighton. They accepted the invitation. They go to the Bahamas this summer. So they've been able to play a lot more together and been able to get some extra practices in with that summer trip. This is a team to be reckoned with. Last year they won 23 games, finished runner up in the Missouri Valley Conference. And suddenly this year with they're returning starters, four of them as a matter of fact. You have what looks like will be a, a favorite for the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year in McDermott. And they're built like a team that can handle themselves in the NCAA tournament. Definitely, they've got great guard play as Young has been the best assist to turnover guard in the conference for the last two years. They've got great perimeter shooting and they've got an inside punch. And with those things, you can compete with anybody. And like you said, they've had the, the time to know each other, to get together. And that creates camaraderie, it creates chemistry. And those are the things that go a long way in winning basketball games in the NCAA. Well, the Blue Jays on the run. Jahins Manica finishes it off. And after Will Artino hit a three-pointer in the previous possession, another Iowa native. From Waukee, nearby Waukee here in Des Moines. He's familiar with this arena. As May goes to the basket. So you look at the Missouri Valley Conference, Wichita State, Indiana State, Missouri State. Drake will be in the mix. Creighton. It's interesting how this landscape has changed in college basketball the last few years, Kenyon, with the one-and-done players. A lot of that talent showing up at the upper level Division I colleges, but leaving quickly, and it establishes some of these these smaller schools, these mid-majors with, with a lot of experience, guys who are in the program three and four years playing together. And it's leveled the playing field a little bit as Artino connects again. It definitely has. You've seen where good teams beat great players all the time in the, across the country, and that's what these... It's a nice take by Marble there. And Marble will head to the line. Well, who will be this year's VCU? It might be Creighton. They're on top of their game in November in Des Moines. Eric Collins standing by here at the Breslin Center. Michigan State happened to be back here in East Lansing tonight. They look to try and get one against the University of Arkansas Little Rock Trojans. Draymond Green and Keith Appling trying to make it two in a row. Friday night, a nice convincing win over Texas Southern. Tonight, a chance against a team that went to the NCAA tournament. Arkansas Little Rock, the Trojans in town. We will have our game tipping off in a little bit. Don't go anywhere, folks. Big Ten Network Basketball continuing. All right, Eric, thanks. Looking forward to that. Final game of our triple header of Big Ten basketball today. Creighton 80, Iowa 48 with 337 remaining. Fran McCaffrey back to the drawing board after this one. Devin Marble at the line for the Hawks. Well, I think one of the things that Iowa's going to have to do is coach talked about the depth that he has on his team, but he's got to figure out a rotation. He's got to figure out where guys fit in and then what is going to be their expectations on the floor. With that being said, defense is where they have to start at in practice because right here they made no adjustments or else they weren't able to follow the adjustments that the coaches put in front of them. So I was really going to have to go back and figure out what they want to do on the defensive end. The depth is great, but I think these guys have got to figure out what their role is as well on both ends of the floor. 
They're talking to Fran McCaffrey before the game. He talked about conditioning so important, which is why he does have 10 players in the rotation at this point because of the up and down style. But you have to have production or else a game like this can happen when you're not shooting and there's no where to go. There's no options to go to. You can find yourself in a big hole quickly like what happened today against Creek. You're definitely right. And there's got to be a balance. We talked about balance on offense, balance on defense, but they've got to be able to go inside and get some baskets in the paint. That's what Creighton was able to do early, and they established themselves. Is that is that the kind of game they wanted to, to do? Get the ball inside, and then their shooters were able to establish themselves outside. So Iowa's got to find balance on the offensive end as well. Well, that'd be a great stroke to get going as Oglesby has made his shots here today. Oglesby now with 11 points. All here in the second half, too. I think Josh is really playing himself into maybe that guy that steps into a larger role going into the next game. Now, it should be pointed out as well that Iowa is without a big bruiser inside. Andrew Brommer with that knee injury. It's a right knee. He re injured the knee, had an MCL injury. And two games ago, he played just six minutes. He's the kind of guy against. A team like Creighton or a, certainly a Big Ten team, he's the kind of guy that can neutralize the paint a little bit. But Brommer is just unable to go after the second injury on the knee. And they have their concerns, but Fran McCaffrey feels like he is improving and he is at the point where he could contribute to this team once again. We'll just see how effective he could be. Well, I think Andrew was one player that really benefited from having Coach Fran McCaffrey here. And so hopefully he can get back soon. Standing ovation for the Creighton Blue Jays. And I guess Doug McDermott has something special in his son, uh, Greg, at Northern Iowa, the Big Mac at 6'8, and his son, Doug McDermott. Looks a lot like him, doesn't he? Yeah, a little bit different hairstyle, but other than that, a lot of very similar characteristics. Greg says he's a lot better than I was. A lot more athletic, but certainly a, a gym rat grown up to coach his son. Always around the programs. And great ties to the state of Iowa. Final minute 20 in the first half. Or rather, in the second half here at Des Moines. And we take a look at our GMC player of the game. GMC professional great player is Doug McDermott. 25 points, nine straight games with 20 plus. Going back to last season, he was a rebound away from a double double today. And not to mention three or four assists that were really on the money getting the ball inside. There's White with the flush. And a rare highlight today for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, I don't want anything to get lost in this, but a Josh Oglesby has really lit the nets up here in the second half, knocking down another three-pointer here a couple possessions ago. He's really playing well. Well, these two teams had not played against each other since 2001. And that was in the big dance. It was a win for Iowa back in 01 against Kyle Korver's Creighton Blue Jays. There's White once again. And White credited with the basket. First time since the 07 08 season that Creighton has started 4 0. Creighton hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since 07. And they have the kind of team that could make it there this year. Creighton should be very happy with the way they played. Iowa knows that they've got some things to go back to, but it's early in the season. A lot of time to get things turned around. Greg McDermott and the great Blue Jays now 4-0. They'll have Campbell next, as will the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa has Campbell on Wednesday. And Doug McDermott continues 
as a shining star on the college basketball landscape. One rebound away from a double double and a most impressive victory for the Creighton Blue Jays out of the Missouri Valley Conference. We'll take a break. We'll be back to give you some final thoughts from Des Moines. Creighton picks up their fourth consecutive win to start the season. 82 59 winners over the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Missouri Valley Conference over the Big Ten today here in Des Moines. Brian Anderson and Kenyon Murray. And this was some kind of effort. I mean, we, we thought this was going to be a very tightly contested game. We certainly knew that Creighton was an impressive team, but you couldn't have expected this. No, Creighton came out and they executed fantastically against the Iowa Hawkeyes and just put the game where they wanted it. They pounded it inside and then they were able to knock down shots and it just turned into a blowout here very, very early. Now, Doug McDermott had a great day, but, you know, Creighton shared the basketball. Kenyon brought it up early in the broadcast. This is a team that will pass it. They'll look for the extra pass in our Verizon key connection is all of the assist numbers and the unselfish style of play for the Blue Jays. Well, I think it comes with camaraderie. You know, we talked about all of their practices. They were able to get to know each other, and they really found comfort in that. 20 assists tonight from the Creighton Blue Jays, and I think that was one of the things that allowed them to get very good open shots here in the second half, especially as they just pounded the Iowa Hawkeyes inside and outside. Yeah, 20 assists tonight. They're averaging 20 assists per game. Twice this year, Creighton has had 28 assist in a single game so this is a team on a roll certainly a team to watch for Iowa moving forward what is next for them in your mind well they have to get back to the drawing board on the defensive end and we talked about that a lot during the broadcast but they've got to get there because they got to be able to adjust they're going to be running different defenses like Fran wants to do they've got to be effective in them and then they've got to figure out with that depth who's going to play what role on the offensive end and they've got to get more from the inside if they make their shots they're a tough team to handle in the Big Ten. They play such an unusual style compared to the rest of the Big Ten. But it all is all about confidence, and they have some young shooters that are trying to establish themselves in this Big Ten conference. So the confidence is a key, and Fran McCaffrey knows that as well as anyone at this point with his young shooters. Definitely, and you saw Josh Oglesby as a young shooter come in the second half and really shoot the basketball well. Matt Gatons didn't get off in the second half, and so that's something you got to fix. But... Fran's got some work to do, and I think practice is going to be very spirited. Spirited practice. You don't have any eligibility, do you? No. <laughs> All right, Kenyon Murray, thanks. Great analysis today. I'm Brian Anderson. Once again, all Creighton today as they pick up the win. Coming up next on Big Ten Network, Arkansas Little Rock versus Michigan State. 82-59, Creighton. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. Now let's go to Eric Collins, Greg Kelser. Michigan State, Arkansas, Little Rock. So long from the morning.